In my last video, we went over the importance of documenting everything in your home lab. But there is one thing that probably stands even more important, which is backing up everything in your home lab. Not only that, your client devices, your server, your Docker containers, and that can be pretty overwhelming. So today I'm gonna to share with you kind of a similar video where I'm gonna walk through my logic and a couple different diagrams to show you the backup system that I created. Now I'm calling it a system because it's much greater than just moving data from one folder to another or from one drive to another. I'm using multiple different methods of backup as well as creating a complete automated system. Now in order to do that, I'm using two different pieces of software. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. Not cool enough for that yet. And I certainly am not married to any of them. So, uh, you know, I don't care what you use. All of my tutorials and home labbing stuff, I really hope people know, should be completely software agnostic for the most part. I don't care what you use as long as you're getting to the same end goal. And better yet, if you are using something different, please drop it in the comments. I love to see what you all are using and certainly it benefits the community. The other thing is, the common convention is you want three different backups. Now I'm gonna show you how to create much more than that, but you want two that are on site and you want one that's off site. Now for me being a home labber and self hosting everything, I really don't wanna export at the end of the day, all of my data back to the cloud. I got into home labbing to kind of get off the cloud. So my method is a little bit different. This is highly debated. There are definitely holes in my method. It's not perfect, but I still think the logic is pretty sound. And it's based off of four different processes. So I'm gonna get on the PC, walk you through those processes, and then show you how that plays out on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis in order to back up everything. Not only my home lab, but also my client devices, you know, anything that I have on the network, I have the ability to back up. Go outside, nerd. Get out, go. I ain't got time to be distracted by your worthless chime ins. Go on. So right here, as I mentioned, this is where all the magic happens. This is the four different processes that I use. Sync, redundancy, backup, and versioning. Now with the sync, I use a piece of software that basically is going to pull all of the data I need off of my servers, Docker containers, mobile phones, whatever I need to back up, that piece of software is gonna go get that and then sync it to one master folder. That master folder is going to live on a NAS device that has RAID drives on it. So that's gonna give me that redundancy. Again, this is part of my backup strategy. Now redundancy is just copies of the data, but it shouldn't be c confused with backup. So again, strategy one would be redundancy of drives then we move on to the strategy two, which would be backup, right? So this is the second backup method. And I'm using a piece of software here that will then take that synced master folder on that NAS. It will then make three different copies of that and place it on another NAS. I'm also using that backup to have versioning. And what it does there is each day, it will take these three different backups of the master folder and it will place them in a folder. I am doing a seven day policy, which means I have seven different versions for each day that has three different folders in it. Now this is Monday, this is Sunday. So the following Monday, this will be replaced. This way I'm not burning through all my drives and I'm comfortable with seven days. Most people do like three or four, but um, I have a lot of important data. So I just wanna make sure that I have a lot of different copies and a lot of different uh, versions of those copies. So what does that look like in my real world setup in my playbook? Well, this is my full data backup strategy. And over here, you can see my client devices. This can be anything from servers to true, you know, PCs, Macs, Linux devices, even Docker containers on a server. Anything that I want to back up, I'm considering a client. Now, each one of those clients, if it is an operating system, what I will do is I will save all the data that I want to back up in one directory or one folder. That's just going to make it easier when I use my syncing software. Now you can use a lot of different open source things. I think there's something called um, uh, SynSync, uh, and there's a couple other open source solutions. But I use something called Good Sync. It is a Windows application. It is a one-time cost, and you open for uh, own it for life. But I like it because it gives me the ability to pick if I want two-way synchronization, and in this case, I just want one-way synchronization. Uh, so it gives gives me a lot of different options. It also allows me not to encrypt it and also not to compress it. Because I work with a lot of video files, I want one data set that is just my raw data. So I use GoodSync to just move that over to a master folder 
you know all these will have folders inside of these master folders that line up with typically the server or line up with the client device or tele or uh, you know my phone or anything like that so the master folder then sits on the nas of course that has raid on it all my NASs have raid on them so that's that built-in um, replication of the data and then from the master folder being on the nas I use uh, Duplicati. Now, Duplicati is a Linux-based uh, software package. It's pretty cool. But what it does is it actually compresses the data, breaks it up into different chunks. You can choose what you want. And then it also has the ability, if you want, I'm not doing this, to export it out to an external source, anything like Dropbox, Amazon. I mean, the sky's the limit. There's a really big list. I'll show it on the screen here. Uh, some of it so the sky's the limit it makes it easy to do now i don't do that but if i want to it's already packaged up nicely for me but instead of that i send it back to my nas inside of this master folder so this way i have a true clean data nothing's compressed there and then i also have one that's compressed so that'll give me two different backups and again i take those um three times a day and then i save them you know for that seven days before i start replacing them that gives me my daily backup. And then weekly, I'll use Duplicati that sits on this NAS device and move it over to my weekly NAS. Now I turn this on weekly scheduled so I'm not wasting a lot of energy and I'll just go ahead and make that move and then I'll have it shut down. Uh, and that too has NAS on it. So that's gonna handle six weeks of backups. And then I move one of those backups, just one of those data sets. So it'll have three uh, per month and I'll, I'll have that for 12 of them before they start replacing and that will be my weekly monthly kind of like my yearly backup here as well now you need you don't need to go out this far i understand i have a lot of things i actually just added this nas if you haven't seen my review i did um something on the mini me that's actually right back there both of my nases you can i don't know if you can see them they're actually off camera now um let me switch this it's, it's worth seeing uh you could probably see them there One's right there, and then one is back there. So uh, they're both currently on right now, uh, doing a backup even while I'm doing this. So they're, they're super strong. I, I really trust them and the software. Uh, so getting back to this, uh, it goes over here and I have all the different backups. So if I wanna zoom in, whoops, on what that looks like, just move that. Uh, that looks like this in a really zoomed in view. Like if I'm just focusing on how I deal with my Docker backup, same kind of deal i do use one additional application here um and i use uh again duplicati as well as good sync as well but the other additional application i use is actually a plugin for unraid some of my nases have unraid on them so it's a plugin and you can actually install this even as non-plugin but it's it's really awesome it's called app data backup and it's designed to back up your volumes your app data and even your templates so i'm using a lot of that as well as good sync uh, to then move it over to the master folder and then use Duplicati. Uh, again, I didn't mention this. this is a zero trust application open source. I really like it, uh, but this is going to be an easy way to compress all that data and save just a second copy there. And then it follows downstream just like uh, I had on this. So it follows right along with the same type of strategy, just giving you a, an example of zooming in on something like Docker data. So with that, I think, you know, this can look a little bit intimidating, I get it. But as long as you're following these basic processes, right? Write it down. How are you syncing? Well, how is your redundancy handled? How are you doing your backup and, and making sure that you do have a version and some type of policy that you're comfortable with? I understand this is a lot that I'm doing, but I also have a lot more data than most folks because I do content creation and video files are absolutely massive. So. Uh, I need to deal with those with a lot of different NASs. But if you only have one NAS or you're even looking for kind of like a roadmap um, of what you need to build out to have a pretty good system or if you want to emulate something like this, again, this isn't the end all be all, uh, but this will give you a really good idea. But as long as you're touching on those things, those different processes, sync, redundancy, backup and versioning, I think you'll be just fine. The computer's right here. You're not wearing the shirt. I spilled coffee on it. I'm a nerd. All right. We're all set here. Look, I know it's not perfect. Definitely know there's holes. 
Definitely know I have made some concessions not using any cloud environment, kind of breaking that rule of three, two on, one off. But hey, I'm willing to take that risk and I make up for for a lot of different copies and I spread it around my network on different NASs. So I feel like I've done a pretty good job in that compromise, but that compromise certainly is. I'm storing a lot of my own data on a lot of different NASs which isn't the greatest thing, but I'm keeping control of that data set. And I know that I have all the privacy that I want because I'm controlling it and not offloading it to a Google or Amazon. So hopefully you found some value in this. If you did consider liking and subscribing, my name's Hill Phantom and I'll see you next time. <laughs>